Thanks for joining us today. We're back here in the taxidermy shop. Today we're going to be doing a bear. Uh, I'll show you what I've already got done. This bear has an artificial nose, and the reason I got this with an artificial nose is because this bear was in a fight and uh, tore his nose up with another bear's claw. So what we've done is cut this nose off. We went right around the nose pad and stayed right on the, the hairline. And uh, right here is where the claw went in. You can see it kind of tore a pretty good gap in there. And it even tore a gap up here on the bridge of his nose and I sewed that back together. So we should be good to go on the, on the nose now. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, put the ear liners in and then we can get started on putting the hide on form. We're doing the same thing that we do on a whitetail or elk, anything else. Mixing up the, the epoxy here for the ear liner. In this bear, I didn't take the cartilage out. So uh, I've already pre-fit the, the ear liner and it fits really well with the cartilage in there. So we're gonna do it like that. The cartilage in a bear's ear is really thick, really tough. It's hard to get out. So we're just gonna do it this way. And these ear liners are made, they are actually made for this form. You can see on this form, actually I've got the ear for this side over here. This head has pockets in it to where this ear liner will fit right in there. And then you can rotate these ears any way you want them. So this works out pretty good. Uh, let's see, I can go right up through here. Bear ears are really easy to shape. They're not pointy. They're just big round ear. Not very big. Of course, this one's got big ears because he's a big bear. This is a big bear, big black bear. No veins showing up on this one. Uh, this bears have real hairy ears. And I think they're pretty much like that all year long. You don't really see the inside of a bear's ear. Don't have to worry too much about detail on a bear because they're so long haired. The only detail I'm going to really concentrate on is on the face, around the eyes and the nose. And we're going to be doing something a little bit different on the on this bear. We don't normally do on anything else, and that's glue the, the skin around the nose, that artificial nose that we have. That'll be something different. This bear also had a big chunk taken out of his ear up here and was split open. He was a fighter. He kind of like Steve back here. He was a fighter. <laughs> Another thing we'll be doing is uh, claying the feet on this bear. We'll be making toes, making the whole foot pad. And you can see on this, this is a big bear. I mean, his hand, his paw is bigger than my hand. Got really big paws. But we'll have to clay all this, clay each toe all the way up to the toenail. That way we can get this these toes to move any way we want them, get them set. He's got a really big feet. I'm gonna go ahead and get my needle ready to go. I use 20 pound fire line. Uh, you don't have to use this. This is just what I use. Uh, what kind of thread is it you use these? Wax thread. Wax thread. All right. Oh, you got the old part right. <laughs> so 
I'm not going to cover this whole thing with hide paste to start off with because I got a lot of sewing to do on the legs. I'm not even going to put any hide paste on the legs yet. So I've already cut my grooves in behind these legs so I've got places to tuck the skin in behind the leg to kind of make this leg pop out, give it a little bit of a dimensional look, 3D, 3D dimensional look. And it'll make those legs really move forward when you're looking at the mount off the wall. Okay, next thing I need to put some eyes in here. Bear have a lot smaller eyes than what most people think. They're pretty small. These are 16 millimeter. Most deer are 30 to 32 millimeter. So there's pretty good size difference there. I'm gonna be doing the same thing I would on a deer. I'm gonna make sure these are symmetrical or level. Take the clay and work it in around these eyes and fill in the gaps. And then I can put that clay in there and that'll also help hold the skin in there when I go to tuck the skin in around the eyelids. And I've left the plastic coating on these eyes also and I do the same thing on the, on the deer and I'll just take my scalpel and cut the, the uh, plastic off at the end after I'm done painting and they'll come out just as glossy as can be. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add some clay down here in these pockets where the ear linings are going. And that's going to give something for the ear liner to stick to. It won't just be flopping around in there. this bear's cut right up the belly down the arms we've also got a little bit of hair slipping right here and I'll show you later how I'm gonna fix that In the meantime, we're going to be real careful with it. I'm just going to kind of get everything in place right now to see what we got going on here. So we got everything pretty close where it needs to be. So now I'm going to start claying these feet, get them built up. And they'll be stuck right on the end of these feet here that's made on the form these these aren't really big enough so i'm gonna have to really add a whole bunch of clay in here and build that up so that's going to take a little bit of time So a bear's paw is pretty much like a human hand. Kind of got the same bone features, same structure. I'm gonna take and fill each one of these toes up with clay. I'm really gonna press it in there. As far as I can get it to go. You could also do this before you put the hide on the uh, form. 
I chose to do it this way because the form's kind of up high enough to where I don't have to bend over quite as much. Feet are right here. I'm going to really pack the clay in there. You can see when you get the clay put in there, you can shape these toes any way you want them and get them to stay that way. So now we'll see what we got here. So I might have to add a little bit more clay right in here. You can see it's kind of folded up on me. But this side over here is pretty full. Yeah, my plan is what we're gonna mount this bear on, he's gonna be standing on a rock, so we're gonna make a foam rock put it on here and then we can shape these toes where it makes it look like you're standing on top of the rock with that one foot there. so get this feet to stay here i'm going to take a pin and run it in right here and that'll hold that time out I'm just filling it up, filling up the toes. I can reach, I can shape it later on. I just want to get the clay in there to replace all the, the bone and meat that was taken out of it. You want me to introduce you, Steve? No? And people's going to say, who's that guy in the background? I'm going all the way to the to the toes and I'm gonna bring it pretty much all the way to the front edge or the back edge of the pad here. Yeah. You know I'll leave a little bit of of an indention in there because this is gonna be This is potter's clay here. You can use critter clay, either one. All right. Now, the guy that killed this, he really wanted to show off these feet. So we're gonna make them look as good as possible. Wanted to show off these big paws that he's got. We would really want to spread these toes out, these claws, make it look like he's ready to swipe at something. And now later I'll come back in. After everything's sewed up, everything's done, I can come back in with my, my tool and form these fingers here on each toe, shape them the way I want them. Right now, we're just getting it stuck on it. And that paw's really full now. It's full of clay. It's replaced all the, the bones, the meat that was in there. It's back to its original shape. Okay. And we're going to flip this thing upside down so I can get to the underneath side to sew him up.
So everything seems to be going in place like it's supposed to. One thing I do need to do is put some hide paste in there. I'm just going to put it on the top side because I don't want to get it in the hair when I'm sewing. The needle I'm using just a, I think it's a number two. 3S needle. You can use several different types of needles, whatever fits your hand good. Uh, it's the same concept. Uh, I like the S needles because they're, I mean, they have a really good point on them. They're easy for me to, to push it through the skin. Sometimes we get a little extra stuff on there and we can just trim it off. And when I'm shaving my, these skins down, get them thin as I can get them, I'll come down the edge where I'm going to be sewing and I'll, I'll shave it down pretty thin. That way I don't struggle trying to push a needle through. It, it just makes it a whole lot easier sewing if you make that part of the skin thinner than everything else. But you, you want to try and get your skins as thin as possible. That way you can get more detail out of them, get more stretch out of them. Uh, it, just, it just makes things a whole lot easier. The thinner the skin is, uh, it's a whole lot easier to work with. I still try to sew it up the same way as I would a deer. I'll try and keep my needle at the edge of the skin. That way I'm not you know, pulling in too much hair while I'm sewing. I want to keep it right on that edge. And the good thing about this fire line, it'll cut through the hair and go in between them. And it, it won't grab as much hair as some of the bigger threads would. Like when I run this needle through here, if I run this through the hair like this, and then when I go to pull that, it'll pull right through that, that hair in most places and it won't grab as much. This is a really big bear. Uh, I don't remember the actual size of it, but I do know when I ordered the form, it was one of the biggest forms that McKenzie had. <coughs> it's still a little bit big for it, but I like to have extra hair or extra skin. It's better to have extra than not enough. So, so this is where it gets a little tough on a bear trying to sew up the legs down here in this pocket. But the good thing is we got him on this stand. We can rotate him however we need to turn him to get to it. You just have to pull the skin around and get it in place before you start sewing. So what I can do here is loosen that and bring it down like this. And now I can get up in here and see what I'm doing now. So we're going to have a little extra sewing to do on this belly because it's went down there. I have to wrap around. So what I'm going to do here is tie this off. That way I can get the other legs sewed. And I'll come back and sew this belly. So you can see here I had to cut this pad a little bit to get it to fit right center on that all thread bolt. I'm going to come in from underneath right here. That way my knot where I tie it off will be on the inside underneath. It won't be that visible. 
not going to see it anyway because he's going to be standing on a rock but you can see it kind of hides it there a little bit regular shoulder mount on a bear is about the easiest thing you can do. Uh, the hide just slips over. There's practically no sewing hardly involved. <clears throat> With these half bodies, you got to sew these legs up. It takes a little more time, but these are a whole lot better looking mount than just a plain shoulder mount on a black bear. Especially one this size, you want to show off its feet how big the, the claws are. So I ran out of thread and had to start over again. So what I done is just tied it off where I ran out at. And I usually tie it three knots because if you tie it in three knots, it usually don't slip. And then you can just grab some more thread and come right back in and start over where you left off. No big deal. So what we gotta do, this is the, the bottom corner here. This has gotta be connected down here. So we've gotta sew this together. We ain't got much left there to go. So I got these ears kind of where I want them. I want to put a pin in here just to hold that temporary so I can do the rest. So one thing I want to do, see what these eyes look like once I get them in place, decide whether I want to add a little bit more clay or not. I think I'm probably going to. Yeah. So what I want to do now is try and build up these eyebrows here just a little bit more, just to give that eye a little more definition. They're just a little bit flat right now. So I'll be using critter clay for that. And this won't take a lot. There's not a whole lot there on the bear's eyebrow. So this bear had a small tear in his eye too where he'd been clawed. So that's making it a little bit difficult to reshape that eye, but I think we've about got it here. And his eyelid grew back with a bulge in it right here. And now there's a, there's a claw mark right here. So there's a gap. His eyelid been split right here. And it's also been split down here, but right here, the eyelid is split. So it's not going to go back the way we want it to. It's not going to be a nice, uh, smooth line across there, but that bear already had that. So that gives him a little bit of character and we're going to try and fix it up the best we can. And I put some extra hide paste right in there to help hold that while it's drying. Bear eyes are a different than a deer. They sit on the, the front of their face because they're a predator, they're a type of predator. Predator eyes tend to be 
more forward on the face. And I'm just using these little insect pins, these little black insect pins to hold these corners in place, this front corner while that's drying. I'm gonna give myself a little more room here to get away from that deer. Basically what I'm doing right now is just making sure that my nose pad is gonna match up good here. It looks like it's all gonna to come together pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and put my, tuck my mouth lips in and then we'll glue that nose. So this is the center point of this bottom or this top lip. We gotta get it right in line with that nose. And get that in place. And that's, that'll be my starting point. And then I come to my corners and I tuck them in. Find where the hairs come together like that. That shows the corner, where the corner is in that mouth. Now everything is in place. All I gotta do is finish tucking everything in. Everything should line up. Now, this bear's also got a wound here on his bottom lip. Big hole here, scratches, big wound down here. Ain't much we can do about that. I'm just gonna put everything in place like it's supposed to be. What I want to do here is make sure I got all my skin pulled up where I need it to go. And then I'm going to take Gorilla Glue and glue this around that nose pad. First thing I'm going to do though is take some alcohol and clean this edge and make sure that it's nice and clean. So what I'm using here is just Gorilla Glue. And we're gonna see how well this turns out. We've gotta get that seam to, that hairline to go right up to that edge in that nose pad. I'm just going to hold that a minute. Before I started doing this, putting the uh, hide on here, I made sure that I thinned this skin down as thin as I could get it to where it would be very pliable, very movable, and the glue would stick to it really well. You don't want to leave any jagged edges around this, this nose. You want it to be a good, clean cut. And I just find that corner, it goes right there. And just put it all in place. And we'll paint over this, we may do just a touch of clay work not much but we'll paint over this and hide that line there after everything's dried <laughs> so 
So I'm just doing a little bit at a time. I don't want to do the whole thing at once. I'm going to fix these corners here. And I want to go back and do the other corner. That way everything's even. Sure the corners are all even, everything's straight. And we've got a little bit of a, a gap up here because this is where that bear was clawed right here and it ripped his nose open. So he's missing a, a small piece right in here, but that's gonna be okay. I can fill that in with clay later on and, and rebuild that. We've got the corners in now, so now we can do this whole top piece in one one swath here and i'm just laying a thin layer of gorilla glue on that top i'm not putting a big glob of it it doesn't take much and i want to make sure i'm staying even when i lay this skin down in there. and it doesn't hurt to kind of pull that skin forward and try to make it just bubble up there a little bit because when this starts drying, it's going to try and pull away. It'll take that roll up and roll it up. So I'll try and pull everything just a little bit forward. And really that, that hole there almost sealed up pretty good because I had a little bit of extra skin there. I still have to put a little bit of clay in there later. So now I can come in here. I've got everything sold up, got it in place, got my feet in place. Now I can come in here with my sculpting tool and push these toes in and kind of shape them a little bit. And we'll clean all this up after we're after this thing's dried. And we can position these where we want them. And then when I put a rock down here, I'm gonna take these claws and I'm gonna pull them down towards that rock and get them on top of a rock. These feet will be the last thing to dry because the moisture in this cape is gonna come down. So I'll have quite a bit of working time on this, on these feet. I'll be able to move them tomorrow. Steve, steal my other screw. There it is, right in front of me. Can't blame everything on him. <laughs> All right, so we'll let this thing dry. Give it a few days. Come back. I'm going to trim this off back here. Do all the finishing touches. I'll mess. I'll just mess with him. Check him every day for the next three or four days, make sure everything's in place. Kind of move some stuff around if I need to. And then uh, we'll get him painted up in a few days. Well, we're back. It's been uh, roughly about oh, a week and a half, two weeks. Something like that. <laughs> We've been kind of busy. So, uh, but this bear is dried up now and he's ready to be uh, clayed around the nose and the eyes and painted and so we're going to try and finish him up today and what we had to do here on the nose was he had an artificial nose because he had been clawed here by another bear so he ripped his nose open and uh, we just used an artificial nose so I had to cut out the nose and glue the skin around that nose the artificial nose and now we're going to epoxy that and kind of blend it all together and make it all look you know one piece so we'll get started. What I'm using is black epoxy sculpt. 
and some safety solvent. And I'm gonna start over here. I got a little bit of a chunk here that was missing from where he got clawed. So I'm just gonna add that epoxy sculpt in there and just kind of push it down in, blend it all together. And we'll just, what I'm gonna do is just go right around this edge of this nose and try and pull that seam line Try and cover it up, try and pull it in, cover it up. Blend it all in really nice. I try to keep a little bit of safety solvent on my sculpting tool here to keep this smoothed out. I'm gonna fill in all the cracks. You don't want to get the Gorilla Glue that is the orange color that uh, expands. You want to get the clear for doing stuff like this because it doesn't expand. And the other good thing about this artificial nose, we don't have to do any painting on it. It is the color it's supposed to be. I don't have to do any painting on the inside. It's already done for us. I'm still going to paint around this the edge of the nose though and try and blend this in to the skin where the hair is. Just want to make sure that you cover up that seam with your epoxy sculpt <clears throat> safety solvent pretty important on this part because it really helps blend in so now up here where this big gash is on his nose I have some brown epoxy sculpt and I'm gonna try and blend that in since the, the hair up there is a brown color, it should blend in pretty decent. It might be a little darker, but we can paint it. And this will help hide those stitches there in that skin. You see it's pretty much the same color as the skin. A little bit of gray in it, a little bit of brown. This being an older bear, they're gonna be scarred up. Different things on their face from fighting and getting into it with other bears. Kind of gives them a little character. Notice once you work that epoxy clay in, it'll really get down in those cracks. And the more you smooth it out and, and work it in, you might have to add more each time you run your finger over it because it's it gets way down in them cracks. Seals it up good. So now I'm gonna go around these eyes and Play them up, seal that in really good around these eyelids, make it all smooth. This, this eye here had been, apparently he had been clawed in the eye too. So he had a big old scratch there, so we're going to try and hide that. And right there is the scratch, kind of tore the skin there a little bit. And then when that all dried up, after we had mounted it, it wanted to pull away some, so we're going to fill that in with that clay. And I'm going to work on these eyelids.
had our lid there. It's just a little bit bulged, but that's from where he had got clawed. Looks like right across there. I don't really want to overdo it, so I'm not. I'm going to leave that the way it is. That's good and smooth around the corner of that eye now, and then I can go here and work on this one. You can see little holes like this we have up here in the eyelid. I can take this epoxy sculpt, put it in there, and I'll just shove it down in that hole. And then I've got these little tiny hairs that are on this on this eyelid. I can take and pull those down and blend those in, make them kind of smash them into that epoxy sculpt and it'll all fold there and it'll all blend in nice. And I mean, that looks just like the skin. There's really no difference. You can't really tell that there was even a hole there. Now up here on top of his head, he's got several scars and scratches. You can see where it's kind of cracked open right here. It's got a little crack here. So we're going to fill those in. It's cocaine bear is cousin crack bear. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a bald spot there where he's been fighting. Just push that clay down into that crack. Mash it down in there with my finger, rub that in, and then take that hair, squeeze it back over it, and then kind of push it down into that clay. And then it'll all blend together. And we're going to paint over all that anyway. But that just helps the, gets the skin looking smooth and hides all the little cracks and holes. And these eyes, I left the uh, plastic over the eyes, so we'll trim that off later too. So now I've got, fill in the gap here where the mouth is kind of opened up some, and then he's got a big old claw mark here on his side of his mouth. We're going to fill that in, fill in in here, and then he'll be ready to paint. I've already brushed him down really good. He's nice and soft, good long hair. This here was a really big scar. The other bear really got him good. I mean, this is a big bear, so I don't know if the other bear that got him was any bigger or not, but they had a disagreement apparently. Yeah. <laughs> now this, on this, mouth part I don't want to fill in that big gap there all the way I just want to put enough in there to fill up the seam it's way up in there I want to leave that you know that mouth where you can see up in there but I want to fill up that crack so I'm just putting just enough epoxy sculpt in there to cover that seam line in there. And it'll help hold that skin down in there and keep it from opening up anymore, which it's already glued, but it's just a little bit of reassurance that it'll help hold that in. All right, so what I'm gonna do here on this nose where I put that epoxy scope is blend this in by putting these little dots in here for the nose pad. 
That way you can't see the epoxy sculpt. And all I've done, I've got a pin here that I've clipped the very end of it off and kind of made it blunt. And this will blend in, bring all that together. So now we're ready to do a little painting. So what I'm gonna use is the cocoa brown. I'm gonna start off with it and see how well it blends. Uh, I may have to go to the dark brown. We'll see what it looks like. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to go to the dark brown, except down here on the front of the nose, this will be the color for the front. And around his mouth. Put a beard all around his eye. Fingerprint there. We don't need fingerprints. Go to dark brown. And I may come back in here and put a little more fleshy look around this mouth. It's not quite the, it's a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna go over this whole muzzle with this dark brown. She's got a lot of skin showing, a lot of hair that's fell out around his muzzle. Just just the fact that he's an older bear, he's got a lot of hair missing up there. So what I'm doing is just getting this paint to stick to the skin good and trying to blend that in. Putting the color back into the skin. And what I'm gonna do after I get all this painted is come in here with a brush and brush the hairs. And it'll all blend in. Leave the paint on the skin, but it'll clean the hairs off. That's the good thing about the lacquer paint. Got a little patch here in his ear. Make sure I clean out my airbrush. <clears throat> I'm gonna come in here with this detail brush now. And I'm gonna scrub these hairs on this muzzle and bring out the color and then the original color. So I went over it with that dark brown, kind of painted in brown, but now this brush will scrub off that paint, but it won't scrub off the paint on the skin. And we can take this brush right up to that nose, that hairline there and, and really scrub it good and get those hairs to stand up. And you can see all that epoxy sculpt in there is really, you can't really see it. It's, it's blended in really good. The only place up is what we have up here where he uh, got his nose scratched. It's a little bit shiny there. But it's all blending in pretty good. The one thing I was going to do, I'm going to try, actually I'm going to try the tan. See if I can lighten this up around his mouth a little bit. We're going to try to see what happens. It's just a little bit too dark. The other thing I could have done, I could have come in there with the fleshy pink, painted it on first, and then brushed that, and then came in with the uh, dark brown and painted over that, and I'd have had a little bit more of a fleshy look. But 
This here blends in really nice. So now I'm gonna paint around the eyes with some black. And all I'm gonna be doing is painting the eyelids. I'm not painting anything else. We've already got the color pretty much the way we want it around the eyes. Because that eye is so small, I'm just gonna paint over that eye. I barely touch that eyelid. <clears throat> and I can even, if I have a little bit of discoloration on that nose, I can come in there and paint that nose a little bit. I've got a little bit of clay that got down in those grooves, so I can just kind of paint over it. And blend that, blend it all together. Just to give a little more detail, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the inside of his nostrils, put a little fleshy pink in there. Or I can use some dusty pink. And it's not gonna be very much. Just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it right there. So now I'm going to get my scalpel and I'm going to peel that skin or that plastic off of the eyeball and see what we got here. It's going to be a lot tougher than a white tail. A whole lot smaller. That's going there pretty good. So now I'm going to come in there with my clear coat. This is called Liquid Crystal. It's lacquer based. Give that eye that wet look. Put a little bit here on his nose. Now we can put a little bit on his claws and kind of shine them up a little bit. Okay, I doubt if this rock's even dry yet. Dried one, I thought. Still wet in the back. I kind of show what we're gonna do here. There's a threaded rod that comes out of the foot of this one. So kind of show you what we're gonna do. May not be able to do it quite yet. This rock's still a little wet. I just put this piece on there to make that foot flat. But what we'll do, we'll just drill a hole through that, place it on there. And then I can put a little bit of foliage in behind that, bring it up around his feet. And that'll kind of bring all that together. I can drill a hole in it real quick, see how well it's going to fit. I'm just going to go about right there. And if that rod's not long enough, then I'll drill a bigger hole in the bottom. Yep, not quite big enough. Now what I can do is take these, I can either put them like this, 
staple them to the rock, get them to stay there. We can use this color. This is a birch tree here. These ain't very good staples. I need longer staples probably. Ain't nothing sticking into the bottom of this. Anyhow, you get the idea. <laughs> so what I can do is put some grass up here. This little tree, just kind of decorate it up a little bit, make it look somewhat like a scene. You don't want to overdo it because then you'll cover up your bear. But uh, just gives a little bit of scenery touch to it. And that's pretty much it. We don't have black bears here at uh, Samson's. This one comes from Canada, so uh, he's a pretty one. Big old bear. Something different we thought we'd show you, but uh, we can just about mount anything up here at uh, Samson's. We can do anything from deer to bear to elk and, and even do fish. So uh, thanks for joining in. Hope you learned a little bit from it. Thanks for joining.